Well, are you getting ready for the new year? It's just around the corner, and as it is a tradition for so many, we set some sort of New Year's resolutions or ideas or plans for what we hope the next year may unfold for us. Now, along with that, we might look at this uh, truth that is so strong and speaks to us, is this very statement that your best life is lived by design, not by accident. Meaning that we set out to be a designer of our life, setting out some intentions, desires, goals, and working within. So, you know what? You're called to be an interior designer. That's right, working on the interior and designing your best life. 2021 offers you an opportunity with a fresh slate. It is an open book. What will you write on the chapters? What will you write on each page? What will it be that this year will unfold for you? Now, for many, 2020 did not turn out to be exactly what you anticipated. Came with lots of surprises. But our theme for that year was we're living in expectancy, expecting good things. And that doesn't matter. That means it doesn't matter what happens in our world around us. We can still be expecting something amazing unfolding within our lives. So the beautiful thought is we get to design our life. That's right. We get to design the best life we desire. We can design it as we work inside, do the interior work within our lives. So you may say, well, where do I begin to do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because you see, when we go within, we find that this is the place where we can do our work of shaping, molding our lives for the highest and best. Let me tell you this. Everything begins in our consciousness. Now, a lot of people, I'm still struggling with the word consciousness and people have been viewing and they write into me and say, you know, it's, I'm not familiar with that term. And what are you talking about when we talk about consciousness? Well, consciousness is the knowing or the knowledge or realization of any idea or object or condition. So we're being conscious. We're being aware of something, aware of the divine presence, aware of God in us aware of God working through us, around us, aware that God is always for us. We're being conscious of it, alert, mindful of it. We're in this powerful a sense of realization. God is present. So we understand that everything will begin in consciousness. It begins with a sense of knowing. I realize this, and as I do, I am acknowledging it. And as I acknowledge it, I become more knowledgeable. So it's this wonderful cycle. As I begin to say, I realize the presence of God is with me, never leaving me nor forsaking me. I realize that that presence is work, work in my life right here and now. And as I join in this realization and I'm acknowledging it more and more, I become more knowledgeable about the power and presence of God at work in me. So we want to understand that everything begins in our journey in consciousness and that nothing has existence except those things that we have conscious, that we are conscious of. Nothing in this world has existence for us until we're conscious of it. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Years ago, I lived in Tanzania in Dar es Salaam and in front of my house was this big mango tree. And every year, this mango season would bring forth all kinds of wonderful fruit. How beautiful it was to see the mango simply drop on us in abundance and we can enjoy a great harvest. I parked my car under that tree in the wonderful shade. In the tropical temperatures, that beautiful mango tree would spread out its branches and provide sort of a canopy that you could sit under and just relax. Well, when I moved from that house, the new occupants came in and in panic called me one day and says, did you know that that house is snake infested? I said, what? Snake infested? What do you mean? The mango tree, we had to cut it down. It's full of snakes. What? Yes, we parked our car under that tree and a, man, a green mamba, a poisonous snake, fell out of the tree, landed on my hand. I just brushed it off. There were more snakes in the tree that you could imagine. What? I sat under that tree. I parked my car under that tree. I enjoyed the fruit of that tree. I was never aware of a snake. I was never conscious of a snake. 
So for me, I didn't have any consciousness of snakes, so I had no fear of snakes. So to me, there was no need to cut the mango tree down. But the new owners of the home came in and in their panic and in their fear, they were so conscious of we're looking for snakes, snakes are everywhere. Lo and behold, they called the next day and said, did you know that the property next to the home was kind of a marshland and they're ready to expand and build. So they've been burning out the marshland and a 12 foot boa constrictor came out. I said, what? I live next door to a 12 foot boa constrictor. You know what? I was never conscious of this. I was not aware. I was not living in fear. They said, this place is snake infested and we're terrified. We're thinking about selling the home. And I'm saying, I live there, never conscious, never aware, never thinking never in fear of snakes being all around. So for me, because I was not conscious, it was not a reality for me. But for those who were now in fear and panic, suddenly it became their reality. They became so conscious that I guess they became so sensitive to the uh, environment, the snakes and seeing them everywhere that they somehow began to draw in their fear. More people uh, are, people who are get full of fear sometimes draw that which you're afraid of to them. Some people are so conscious of fear and well then others, not conscious, not aware, not thinking, not dwelling on fear, live fearlessly. Why is it that some people are just so brave and fearless, they can walk a tight wire across a canyon where the others were thinking our consciousness is all, wait a minute, I know I will fall. I, I wouldn't have my balance. I couldn't do this. I'm terrified of the height. That's what's dwelling in your mind. So what's dwelling in your mind becomes your reality and it becomes true for you. But if it's not dwelling in your mind, is it true for you? Those people can walk across the wire who are simply fearless because it's not in their consciousness. So when we understand that sometimes we have allowed consciousness of worry, stress, fear, anxiety about every day-to-day -day experience, it just brings us to this place that we begin to focus and we begin to think on it and dwell on it becomes that, that which manifests in our life. And then there are those who are at perfect peace in the midst of all kinds of turmoil, all kinds of challenge. And they just live at ease. And wait a minute, we're living in the same world. Are you not stressed? Are you not worried? Are you not panicked? And others are, I'm at perfect peace. You see, it all depends upon what you're holding in consciousness. So let me say that again, nothing has existence except those things that we have in consciousness. So our real question is we've got to ask ourselves always, what are we holding in consciousness? What are we holding in our mind? What are we holding in our thoughts? Because if we're going to design the best life yet, we may have to say, wait a minute, there are some things that we just don't want to hold in mind. We want to release, we want to let go of. Now the Bible has been telling us all along for thousands of years. But people read what they want to read out of the Bible. They love to read stories of punishment. They love to read stories of damnation, condemnation. They love to interpret scripture from this perspective. But in Ephesians chapter five, verse 13 says, all things when they are admitted are made manifest by the light. For everything that is made manifest is light. You know what light is? Consciousness. Light is consciousness. Because that which you're conscious of, suddenly you view, you see, you can uh, experience to the fullest. You have a realization of it. It's like, ah, the light went on. I'm conscious of it. I'm aware of it. Wow. I'm aware of all the goodness of God. The light is on. It's shining. Light is consciousness. And so when we understand this, that we understand that everything is being manifested by the light or being brought about to our life by our consciousness, what we're aware of, what we're thinking of. And everything is made manifest is made manifest because of this consciousness or awareness that we have. Now the ancients have been saying this all along, but we've been saying, wait a minute, you know, I don't need to think about that. I just go through life by accident. Whatever happens, happens. I just let it be. And well, let me tell you, you're not being an interior designer because an interior designer, designer is working on the interior of your life by choice and designing and not living by accident. So choosing what you will hold in mind is so crucial for our life. It's very important to understand that 
the importance of our consciousness, it's, it's so crucial for our spiritual growth because what you put your attention on is gonna grow. So are you putting your attention on fear? When we come to 2021, will your focus be on stress, anxiety, things that you don't have? Or will it be on abundance and blessing and holding for strong a consciousness of all the good that is of God? You see, it's all where we put our thinking, our realization, our awareness, because whatever you're focused on, it's going to grow for us in our lives. It's gonna manifest. But so many of us have not experienced some spiritual growth in our lives because we've allowed our attention to go elsewhere. And so we've allowed uh, all kinds of things to sort of be distracting in our journey. And uh, we have just let ourselves just wander off in our mind. And let me tell you this, if you are busy looking for the next conspiracy theory or you live from a continual belief that the world around you is conspiring against you or that you've been cheated, well, let me tell you this, everything then in your life will be about people cheating you. And you're gonna constantly hold that in your mind and in your focus. And But if you're looking for all the good things and you're not allowing anything to distract you from the good, let me tell you this, you'll be amazed at God's goodness in your life and this awareness will just grow, 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 and you will experience a spiritual growth in your life. So when we say that light is consciousness, we're saying that light is then understanding, that which you understand. It's this realization, it's becoming aware, and here we call ourselves at this church, City of Light. We didn't choose that name just out of random, but we thought it really describes who we are our message, our mission, that we are a community, a city, a gathering place of understanding, a gathering place of people of Christ-mindedness, one-mindedness, all coming together in one mind with this great realization, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. We are the city of this understanding, of this great uh, realization. We are a community, shall we say, a gathering, uh, that has come together with this great message of the light, the light being there within our lives. Now, let me tell you this. This consciousness is one, and it's not divided. It's not chopped up into little pieces, pieces although it may be expressed in a wide variety of ways, in uh, lots of diversity. But there is just one consciousness, and that is the universal mind of God, this wonderful, infinite knowledge of God that is available to us, and you have the opportunity to connect, plug in, shall we say, to it. You have the opportunity to allow, as you say, wait a minute, I want to rest in divine consciousness, divine awareness. I want to open my life up to the good, as we sang this morning uh, in our opening. I want to be conscious of this at all times. I want to understand that it's not divided, but it's expressed in each and every one of us in unique ways. And this is the realization that this awareness of I am, awareness of God, I exist, I am, the divine is in me. Now, let me tell you this. We may forget who I am. <laughs> now, times we, we went, who am I? Where am I going? We may forget where I am. Yeah. What, what did I, why did I walk into this room and why am I here, you know? Uh, but we cannot forget that you are, that I am. You can't forget that. You know, I am, I do exist here. I am alive. We cannot forget the I am aspect. And the awareness of being is there and it remains regardless of our forgetfulness of who we are and where we may be. But we'll always know that the divine is there within us. So this consciousness, this light, this awareness that's within us, it enables us then to consciously design from the interior to work within. Jesus, our master teacher, the way shower for our journey of our life said, you are the light. You are the consciousness. That's right. You are the one. So be that. Jesus said, you are the light, so shine before men that they may see your good works and bring glory to God. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. We take this scripture to really define city of light, that when we rise up to a higher consciousness, meaning a city built on a hill, a higher level of thinking, 
It can't be hidden because it's beacon, it's light, it's consciousness, it's awareness of goodness of God is so great. That's why this morning we took some time to look at some slides or pictures that reviewed the past year to be conscious of God's goodness and to celebrate it. To God be the glory for the accomplishments, for the great things that have been done. We give God the glory because that light, this consciousness that says in the midst of challenge, all things are possible. That kind of thinking enabled us to do all the great things that we've been able to accomplish this year. Reaching out across the world through multimedia, expanding our Dr. Angelo Pazella Wisdom Center to be the largest lending library of metaphysical books, to be a resource center for learning and education workshops, and to be used mightily in the years ahead for programming that expands people's spiritual enrichment. To have these times when we have invested in feeding the hungry and the homeless, when so many programs closed down, to say to God be the glory, we've been there to help and to support and to be a shining beacon because the consciousness, the realization, the awareness of City of Light is all things are possible. All things are possible. Wow, when you have this consciousness, you're designing the best life yet. The best life yet. So in that journey of this work that we're doing for 2021 of designing our best life, let me remind you that one of the best things you can do as an interior designer, working inside your life, designing, shaping, and molding the life you wanna be, is to stay hungry. To assure this continuity of spiritual soul and mind and body growth, we must ever seek to incorporate divine ideas into our life, new and fresh ideas. Stay hungry. Say, you know what, never let your spiritual life go where it's starving and dies out, but constantly be feeding and saying, I wanna know more, I wanna grow more, I wanna seek more, I wanna experience more. I'm not content with the spiritual life that I had yesterday. I, for today, I want growth in the now, in this moment. I wanna understand, I want my consciousness to be expanding that I'm more and more aware of God's goodness within my life. Now here's our problem. In this effort to design this best life, we sometimes can be a little del delusional. Our chief delusion is that we think that there are causes other than our own state of consciousness that are shaping our life. And so we wanna blame, we wanna fill in the blank with things like, I'm not blessed because I live in poverty. I'm not blessed because of my upbringing. I'm not blessed because of my gender, sexual orientation, identity, etc. I'm not blessed. We can fill in all the things of I am not blessed. And we fill in the blank with some sort of thing that is a delusional thought. Because let me tell you this, we think that there's some other cause, but really the only cause is the light within you, the consciousness within you that which you realize, because that which you realize is shaping and designing your life. It is those who are living in this absence of blessing because they're not living in a blessing consciousness. They're not seeing it, they're not realizing it. Like the snakes, I never saw those snakes, whether they existed or not. I don't know where they were, but the, pre, the next owner saw snakes everywhere. I lived there for years and like, wow, how could it be that several years went by? But I lived in that sort of sense of perfect peace, not afraid, not fearful. Let me tell you this, when you move into that kind of consciousness, you're moving into a blessing consciousness that all is good. No matter what you're facing, no matter what the obstacle may be, all is good. Say you lost your job and you begin to say in blessing consciousness, I am grateful because I know something better is coming to me. I know that God is making a way for something even better for my life than what this is. You may say I am facing a big challenge financially and you may feel like, oh, well, how am I gonna pay this bill? But you say, thank you, God. And as I encourage everyone in classes, when you receive those bills, put a big smiley face on them, on the outside of that envelope and just say, I'm so happy because the universe sent me this bill knowing that if this bill came to me, 
I must have the funds to pay it. So I'm going to believe that the universe is providing and I'm happy to pay that bill with great joy and great sense of blessing consciousness. A consciousness that says, I am ready for it. I'm believing for it. All things are good, are unfolding. And now the key is stay in this consciousness. Don't let your life be distracted. You know, quite often in the realm of interior design, in the physical realm, when you're designing a home, my partner Robert was an interior designer, and so quite often I went along with him to be an assistant. And over 20 years, I met lots of different clients. And when they would begin to work on the design and they would offer their input uh, and they would go shopping looking for the, oh, I love this, but I like that. And I would like this. And I went, wait a minute, wait, wait, you can't have three sofas in this small nine by 10 room, you know, or you can't put, uh, you know, all these lamps and all these pictures and paintings. You've got to choose, but you're so distracted. Oh, I love contemporary and I'd love traditional. I like that uh, sort of... Uh, uh, southwestern touch and oh something oriental and uh, there is such a thing as being eclectic but sometimes you get too much and the design becomes muddled we get distracted so it is in our life too in our spiritual life stay conscious of the blessings of God and don't let your life be distracted don't shut off this divine flow that is ever working in your life don't shut it off by uh, somehow losing that connection, but allow this consciousness to ever awaken, ever teach, ever speak, ever show, ever unfold, and ever direct your paths. Now, I also want to let you know that the best thing about being a designer and an interior designer, designer in the physical world and using that application, designing in our spiritual life, is you can change, you can rearrange, you are the designer and you can create something new. Isn't that wonderful? This is a beautiful aspect of our life in the journey of designing our best life. Yet we can create, we can choose, we can rearrange, we can have something new. You know, rain falls as a result of a change in the temperature in the higher regions of the atmosphere. So it is that when we have a change of circumstance, that happens in our life, it happens because of a change in consciousness. So when there's a change in consciousness, there's a change in our life, in our world. What it's simply saying is, change your thinking and you change your world. Just simple as that. You see how that is unfolding for us in our life? That what happens is you can be transformed, but to be transformed, you must make a change a change in thinking. Your thoughts cannot change unless you've got some new ideas to think from. So what new ideas are you putting out for 2021, for the best life yet? What new ideas do you have? What new thoughts out there? What are you thinking of? Because if you don't want to be different, then there's not going to be a change happening within you. You don't want to do something, try something, experience something. If you don't want to evolve, if you don't want to grow, if you don't want any of these kind of things, then there won't be a transformation. And it may not be your best life yet because you're not the one doing the creative work of designing the life that you want. So start by assuming the wish fulfilled, assuming that uh, that which you so desire is already unfolding for you now before it begins, before 21 begins, before this year unfolds or even starts, before January 1 hits the mark, let us begin by now assuming I'm living the best life. I'm living my best life right here and now. Our best life is full of health and wholeness, loving relationships, success and prosperity. I'm living and that's my consciousness and I'm gonna look for it, I'm gonna see it, I'm gonna find it everywhere. And my consciousness, I'm going to make a change. And I'm going to release thoughts of fear, doubt, stress, worry, anxiety. Things that say it's impossible, it's not going to work out. I'm going to release all of that. And I'm going to be transformed by some new ideas, some fresh new ideas that will help us to make a transition within our life. And this is what's so important for us in the journey that we have uh, really 
imparted in our life this desire for change to make a difference within our life. So what I want you to know is that you can know all kinds of things in this world by analyzing them, defining them, seeing them mentally. But to experience something spiritually, you can only do it by becoming it. Okay? So to experience something spiritually, you've got to become it. Not sit as an observer and watch it. I, I watch the healing in your life, but if I really want to claim healing, I've got to experience it myself. I've got to become this one who is healed. I've got to become this one who is prosperity, prosperous. I've got to become this one who is loving. I've got to be coming. Is this is then that we know it fully and firsthand. And how important it is. So as you're designing your life, I want you to really become that which you are anticipating, what you're hoping, the new ideas you put out there, the new thoughts that you have about what you want for your life and how you want to live it so successfully. I want you to become it then. I want you to live as if and begin to say from right now, I am healthy. I am whole. I become it. I am successful. I am prosperous. I am these things. I become it. And when you become this in consciousness and mind, you experience it spiritually so beautifully. So become what you've designed for 2021. Become. So that you start the first day, January 1. I am living the best life yet. I am living it right now. I'm not waiting for anything to come. I'm not waiting for anything to transpire. I'm not waiting for anything to change because I've made the change in my consciousness right here and now. And I'm beginning to think from a new way, a new perspective. I'm beginning to see things from a whole different way and I begin to live out exactly that which I'm holding in consciousness, that which I realize, that which I believe to be true. I'm living it. And so I'm gonna walk down the street health and wholeness. I'm going to walk down the street feeling prosperous. I'm going to walk down the street feeling successful. I'm going to walk down the street feeling these loving relationships, being loved and loving others. All these great things are ours. We can design our life. So today I'm inspiring you to become an interior designer, designing your interior, designing for the best life. You have the power to do so. And I want to encourage you to use this power right here, right now, to say, I am going to open my life to new ideas, new aspects, a broader consciousness, a greater awareness. And I'm going to begin by being so aware of everything that is good that's happening right now that I will begin to experience an expansion of that awareness and become even more knowledgeable. Design your best year. Design your best days. Design your best life right now. You are called to be an interior designer. Amen.